Welcome to Apps and Law. I'm Brett Burney. In part one, we recovered how to import text transcripts into TranscriptPad, tips for reading through transcripts and searching the text. Now, in part two, we're focusing on how to select text and assign issue codes in TranscriptPad and creating those marvelous reports. The first step in creating any designation in transcript pad is to select text by tapping in the left margin with the blue line numbers. Let's say you find a question and answer exchange that's important and relevant. If this were a printed paper transcript, you would want to highlight it or underline it or put a sticky note on it. But in transcript pad, all you have to do is tap the line number of the first line you want to select. Then you scroll down and tap the last line of your text selection. You'll immediately see the annotate designation box pop up where you can assign an issue code or flag the text or highlight the text and more. We'll come back to this annotate designation box in just a moment. Your text selections can be on a single page or they can span multiple pages. If you only need a single line designation, then just tap the same line twice. You can actually select text in the reverse. You can tap the last line of your text selection first and then scroll up to tap the first line of your selection. If you make a mistake in selecting text, just tap outside of the selection and it'll clear that for you. Okay, now let's walk through the annotate designation popover, which is the beating heart of transcript pad. It's where the work really gets done. Let's start with the highlight and underline options. Since they're fairly self-explanatory. Both of these annotations really just serve as a nice visual way to direct attention to sections of text. You get four colors each for a highlight or an underline. I do wish there were more to choose from or that I could create custom colors. If you need to remove a highlight or underline, you'll need to select the same text again and then tap the circle with the line through it under highlight or underline and that will remove the annotation. You can create an issue code to assign to your text selection. You just tap create issue code, you give it a name and select a color. Now you only get six choices here. Then tap done. The color you select is not applied to the text. It's the color of a vertical line that appears in the left margin to signify an issue code has been applied to that text. Now you can assign that same issue code to other text selections and it'll be available for you in the annotate designation pop-up after you select some text. All of the selections for each issue code get listed in the left panel. So anytime that you need to jump to a specific section, you just pivot down the arrow on an issue code and tap on the page and line number that you need. You'll jump right to that section that you tapped. If you need to change the name or the color of an issue code, just tap the edit button there on the right. You can also delete an issue code altogether, but you'll also lose your annotated selections. Transcript Pad also lets you flag selected text, similar to how you'd put a sticky flag or a post-it note on an important page in paper. A flag can stand by itself or you can type a note to be associated with a flag. Now, I really don't see too much of a point of a flag without a note, as you could just assign an issue code or, or just highlight the text. But being able to type a note in a flag is extremely helpful. Recording your thoughts about a particular section is invaluable so that you don't forget those thoughts later. Now, this is the equivalent of writing a note in the margin of a transcript or writing a note on a post-it note, except that you can read these notes. <laughs> They're not in your handwriting and your notes won't fall off like post-it notes will. A flag without a note has an empty flag icon. A flag with a note has a solid flag icon and you'll also see a blue dot next to the designation in the list on the left panel. Tap the flag icon in the transcript to see your note where you can edit it if you need to. Advanced tip, you can split up a flag or, or really you can split up any annotation. Uh, let's say that you have a flag with a note spanning several lines, but you don't want some of the lines in the middle to be flagged. Simply select those middle lines and then tap the red delete flag button in the pop-up. This will effectively split the flagged section in two, but the remaining flagged lines will retain the flag with the note. The last two functions at the bottom of the annotate designation pop-up are really useful too. Tapping copy will copy your text selection to the iPad's clipboard so that you can paste it into a document or a note or an existing email draft. Tapping email will create a new email message on your iPad's mail app with the subject line pre-populated with the page and line numbers of your selection and the text of your selection will appear in the body of your mail message. 
All of the work you've done assigning issue codes and highlighting text and flagging sections it all pays off when you tap the magnificent reports button. The pop-up wizard here looks a little intimidating at first, but it's really simple once you break the sections down. On the left side, you can choose your report type. When you tap a report type, you'll get a little description on the right of what's contained in the report. We'll come back to each report type in just a moment, but first let's decide what content that we want included in our report. Do you want all your flag selections included in the report with or without notes? Uh, what about your text highlights and your underlines or which issue codes do you want included in the report? You can pick and choose what pieces of information makes the most sense to be included in your report by simply turning each option off or on. And based on which report type you select, you can determine your designation sort order. Sorting your report by annotation means the report will be grouped by annotation and then lists all of the page and line numbers associated with each annotation. Sorting your report by page means the report is grouped by each page number first and then it lists all of the annotations on that page. If you're not sure which one to pick, the good news is that you can always delete a report and start over. Okay, now let's talk about the different report types. First, you have the PDF reports, and I would say that the detailed PDF report is probably the most popular. When you tap Create Report, you'll get a PDF that lists each designation page and line number along with the text of each selection. Based on what you selected for the content of your detailed PDF report, you have basically just created a summary of your transcript without any copying or pasting or printing. Now this PDF can be emailed to a colleague, it can be saved to your case in transcript pad, it can be uploaded to Dropbox or OneDrive, you can open it in the PDF Expert app, you basically now have a PDF summary of your transcript. Next, let's go to the summary PDF report. It's the same as the detail PDF report, except that you don't get the text of each of your selections. You just get the page and line numbers of your designations. The two annotated PDF reports are basically your entire transcript, but your designations are now included with the text of the transcript. There's a helpful key for your issue codes on the front page, However, if you use more than six issue codes, then it sometimes gets a little difficult to tell the issue codes apart. The annotated full report creates one page per PDF page, and the annotated mini report creates four pages per PDF page. The impeachment report is one of the newest features in Transcript Pad, and it's really nifty for quickly creating slides of your text selections that can be presented in court for impeachment purposes or really any time that you just need some nice slides of the text from a transcript. The impeachment report PDF can be printed or emailed or sent to another app like uh, TrialPad so that it can be presented on a projector or TV. You can leave it as a PDF or you can convert the PDF into images. The text reports offer detail and summary options as well. I don't see these reports used very much, but they do offer a great way to produce plain text versions of your text selections that can be copied into a Word document. The Microsoft Excel report is amazing, but unfortunately, I, I find it's often overlooked. The report creates an Excel spreadsheet with a worksheet or a tab for each flag or highlight or underline or issue code that you have included in the report. Now, you can view a basic version of the Excel report inside Transcript Pad, but to get the full effect, you need to use the share menu to open in the report to the free Microsoft Excel app on your iPad. The last two report types here are very specialized for any litigation teams that plan to use trial presentation software, such as Sanction or Trial Director. Now, both of these applications can show text selections from transcripts, but you have to tell the programs, of course, what sections you want to show. These two reports create special files that can be imported directly into either Sanction or Trial Director, which makes creating the sections to show very easy, as well as expediting the process of having to create video clips from any depositions that were recorded. Advanced tip, you can create a report from either a single deposition or for all the transcripts in a case. Again, you just need to focus on what level in the case folder that you are at. If you are in a single transcript, then your report will only be on that transcript. If you're at the top level of your case with multiple transcripts, then your report will cover all of those transcripts. The one major downside I see with Transcript Pad is the fact that it's not easy to collaborate uh, with others on transcripts. 
Other applications like text map or case notebook are server-based, meaning that when one member of the team annotates a transcript or adds a note, the rest of the team can access the same information and collaborate in real time. Transcript Pad only lives on a single iPad. Any annotations or notes that you make on a transcript stays on your iPad. So how do you collaborate with your team? Here's a few suggestions. First, you could print it all out. Second, you could email a report that you create from a transcript. Third, you can email an entire case folder from your cases list, but beware that this can get pretty big uh, fairly quickly. In fact, Transcript Pad asks if you want to include the PDF exhibit since they get really big. The text files are kind of tiny. A new mail message is created with an attachment of the case that can only be opened in Transcript Pad. So you can send this to an associate or colleague that has an iPad and uses Transcript Pad. Lastly, you can archive a case, which is good for either making a backup copy of your case or sharing the case folder with a colleague, but this method requires you to use a computer and the iTunes software. If you want to know more about how lawyers are using Transcript Pad, then be sure to listen to my podcast interview with Stephen Embry, where he talks specifically about how he uses the app in his litigation practice. You can download Transcript Pad from the link below. Be sure to sign up at appsandlaw.com to be notified of new app reviews. You can also subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thank you.